welcome back to my channel. Also, happy 2019 to everyone. I have not made a video since the end of 2018, so today's video is gonna be pretty exciting. I hope I am doing actually a home decor related video, and I will be giving my bathroom a little makeover. So a bunch of people from my apartment tour have been asking if I can do videos about my DIYs, showing how I did them and all of that. Decorating my bathroom is something that wasn't necessarily a priority for me. When I was furnishing this apartment, I was really focused on doing like the main space here, obviously, and when you move even if you're furnishing an apartment on a budget, it adds up really quickly. I just wanted to get it to a good place where I was happy enough with it, but I didn't really care about, you know, going all out in the bathroom. It was more the main space. But now that I've lived here for about eight or nine months, I thought now would be a good time to do my bathroom. And also a perfect opportunity to show you guys how I do my DIYs at the same time. I am going to be doing not only wallpaper, but a little storage unit thing that I will be marbling the top of. So with that said, let's just get right into the video. I hope you guys enjoy this. And if you want to subscribe, comment, or like below, that would be awesome. And I will see you guys in a minute. Okay, so for this bathroom makeover, I'm gonna be doing two main projects. One is a storage solution to give myself more storage because all I have right now is a sink and very little counter space. And the next one is a wallpaper. It's by the same brand who makes the wallpaper on my wall back here. And this is a design I had been eyeing for a while. I'm gonna build this guy first. All right, so my friend Celia is actually here to help me out with this project. Um, she has a channel too, so I'll link everything for her below. And yeah, we're gonna, Try to build this thing right now. Carrie's a lot better at it than I am, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> drawer unit is just plain white and I want to spice it up so I'm just going to do a little marble contact paper on it like I did with this coffee table right here and my kitchen countertops as well so all you need for this is just the piece that you are working with some contact paper this contact paper is the one that I used on the coffee table but I actually used something different for the countertops this kind is not very forgiving and I don't think it would come off of a surface once you put it on but the kind that's in my kitchen is a little more like flimsy I guess you could say some scissors and then a really sharp exacto knife that's really the key and I also have a piece of cardboard which I just cut out from the box that that I'm gonna use to basically cut on so that it doesn't cut into my wood floor. So you're gonna wanna start out by placing your piece down on cardboard or something similar and then just give it a quick wipe down to make sure there's no dust or dirt on the surface. This might seem self-explanatory, but just make sure you're also working on the correct side of your piece, which usually means that it's the flat and completely blank side. And then you'll wanna measure out the size of the contact paper. Instead of using the whole roll, you'll want to just cut off a piece to work with first. Just roll it out before removing the sticky backing so that it doesn't stick to it, obviously, and use some scissors to cut it out. Now this does not have to be perfect by any means, and the edges don't have to be super clean at all, but just make sure to give yourself an extra inch or two on each side so you don't have to be quite as precise about where you're placing it down. Also, let's pause real quick. If the piece you're working with is larger or wider than the contact paper, what I've done in the past is just laid down a piece that covered as much of the surface as I could and then lined up the edge of it with the next one. You will unfortunately end up with a line, but it's not really noticeable from far away. And then when you're ready to start assembling, I like to start at the corner because it's just the easiest place to peel back a piece and then just take off maybe an inch or so, which you can see that's what I'm doing here. Do not pull off the backing completely because then you'll end up with the entire thing being sticky and then just line it up with your piece and place it down. I would say do as little of an area as possible to start with and do it width wise and then as you can see here I'm grabbing a book. I'm just smoothing out the contact paper with the book over the surface just to make sure there's no air bubbles. And then once you've done that peel back a little bit more of the backing I just like to roll it up into itself, which is kind of what you can see that I did here, so that as I'm pushing the book down and adhering it basically to the surface, the sticky backing will just keep unrolling as I'm doing it, if that makes sense. So as you can see, I'm working slowly and I'm just working from the part that's closest to me to further away from me, very, very slowly and going laterally. Instead of just going at it like free for all, I just wanna make sure that there are no air bubbles at all. The air bubbles, once they're in there, 
you can definitely get them out but it's not very easy so i just like to make sure everything is as flat and smooth as possible and then just keep doing that until you've reached the end basically and once you've done that just smooth out everything make sure that every edge is accounted for and that it's fully stuck on there like this and then you're going to want to flip it over when it comes to trimming the edges in order to get that really clean edge to where you can't really tell that there's a piece of contact paper on it i like to take an exacto knife you're going to want to make sure that it's really sharp because if it's not that's when you're going to run into issues it's just not going to be as crisp and clean as it could be this is what i would suggest to do especially if this is your first time doing it as you can see kind of put the exacto on an angle angling it in towards the piece instead of just straight up and down i'm applying a little pressure so that it stays in the same line and then it'll come out looking clean and as close to the edge as possible if you mess up at all and you get the little jaggedy edge like this you can definitely go fix it after and i'll show you how to do that in a second if your contact paper isn't detaching from your surface after you have gone over it with the exacto i would suggest going over it again one more time instead of just you know getting frustrated and pulling it prematurely and then risking tearing it or something like that as you can see i have this little tiny jaggedy edge and i just want to cut that off so i'm just running the exacto along the edge Again, putting pressure on the edge of it to make sure that it's a nice clean line. The key here is really to just be precise and patient and have the right tools, and then you'll end up with something really clean and pretty. Welcome to my bathroom. I am currently on a little ladder, which is why I look so tall right now, but I am gonna do my wallpaper. I am wallpapering this wall right here. I had tried to put shelves and stuff on this wall, but it's actually, I think, concrete. I can't and don't want to drill anything into it or try to hang anything on there, so I thought wallpaper would be a good alternative. Well, I'll show you what it looks like. Side of this right now. It's very fun, a little crazy, but it matches the blue and white theme, and I thought it was cute. And now we're back to voiceover. I think really the easiest way to start getting your wallpaper onto the wall is basically to take a corner and fold back the edge of it. You don't want to peel back too little, but you also don't want to peel back too much. So, what I like to do to give myself a defined area to work with is to fold it back and then crease it, and similar to the way you'd like dog ear a page on a book. And then for me, the ceiling here is not level and the walls are not straight up and down. So I couldn't just line up the top of my wallpaper with the wall. I had to basically place it down first where I think it would go. And as you'll see here, I do mess up, but you can see how easy it is to reposition and take off. It doesn't affect the stickiness of it at all. And then from there, I used a level to just make sure we were in the right place. And since the ceiling is not level, I slid the level around on different parts of the wall to make sure that overall it was level. Once I was happy with it and felt like it was in a good place, then I started peeling back more pieces of the backing. I'll admit the way that I did this is a little bit messy, but I have worked with this type of wallpaper several times now, and this is always how I've done it. I just kind of tear pieces off depending on where I'm working. Now this might seem annoying and counterproductive, but personally I'm able to work quickly and it's the system that works best for me. So that's what I did. And similar to how I did the marble DIY, I use a book to smooth down the surface as I go. Now, obviously I sped this clip up a ton, but I do know that the actual clip itself is just 15 minutes long. So basically to do this area, it really only took 15 minutes, which if you think about it is such a short amount of time. Now I have to be honest here, to cut the spare wallpaper off of a wall is much different than it is to cut it off of a very small piece that you're working with like the marble. There's a few methods that you can use to get clean lines. I would say you can try creasing it. It doesn't have to be a perfect crease or a super sharp one, but after you've made some type of crease and defined the area that you're working with, just pull it taut and place the exacto on it and kind of just work very slowly and run your exacto down it. Having that resistance there will kind of guide the exacto to cut and stay in a straight line so this might be your best bet when you're working in a corner so where the two walls meet or where you're working where the wall and the ceiling meet each other it is much much easier to do this because you kind of have an automatic guide but for example here where my wall meets the tile there's not a really defined line and there's not a sharp corner for me to kind of cut into to guide me so i pretty much just had to be very careful and kind of follow the steps that i just described all right, so it is all done. What do you guys think? I am going to bring in my little storage unit that I built, and I'm actually going to put this laundry hamper to use finally. Everyone should be really excited about that. And all the decorations are here, and then we'll be done, and I'll do the final reveal.
guys, so here's the final reveal. Everything on the shelves here is the same, but then I switched out my towels or I upgraded them. I added the second layer of towels that match all the blue in the, in the bathroom. And then finally, I am using this hamper. So we'll see how that ends up going. I have a new trash can. I liked that it was kind of like modular and had sides so that it would fit nicely in that area and it's a lot smaller than the one I had before. And then I have my nail polish rack up here. I didn't want to get an over the toilet storage unit. A, I don't really love the way they look and B, I didn't want to take this down and I didn't really don't have anywhere else to move it. So I ended up doing this little storage unit. So this is what the marble top looks like. And then on top of it, I'm gonna have more counter space now, which is awesome. But I decorated it with a little vase. This is from Jonathan Adler's Now House collection on Amazon. These are both random individual fake stems from Target. And then I um, have this diptyque candle. I had a nice pleasant surprise at work this week, so I decided to treat myself to that. And then in the drawers here, the top one is like a lot of different body stuff. In the middle here, I have just some fragrances. I don't know if I'll keep it this way because I don't love that the colors clash, but for now, they're gonna live there. And then in the bottom drawer, I have a bunch of hair products. So this is what under the sink looks like now. Excuse the light behind the shower curtain. I have my ring light here to give some more light to this bathroom because the lighting in here regularly is not so cute. This is the same, but I did just change out the rings on there because the other ones were too small for the width of the rod. All right, so that is gonna be it for my bathroom makeover. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope that you learned a little bit about DIYs and how to do them. Sorry if this video was a little bit all over the place, but I wanted to make sure that you guys saw everything that I did throughout the day. I will leave everything that I used and bought linked down in the description box below so that you guys can shop it and see for yourself. The girl who makes the wallpaper has a ton of different designs that are all super fun and she is really, really great to work with. So be sure to check her out. Also, thank you to Celia who is here for helping me film. My next video will be out sooner than this one was. It's already filmed, it is a Q&A, like get to know me video, because a ton of people have been asking for that. So be on the lookout for that. It should be up in about a week after this. So I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching, bye.